Welcome to the Fitness Fest podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia. I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness. Today we have a great one for all you group fitness fans out there. We have Petra Robinson. She is going to share her story, talk about all the ins and outs of her journey throughout the fitness industry and all those good things that if you've seen her, you've been to her lectures or you know who she is, that you probably, how did she do that? How did she do all those great things? Well, today, She's going to share it. So Petra, first, thank you for being our guest on the Fitness Fest podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Yes, yes. Well, let's kick it off. Same way we do every episode with Petra. Can you share your story within the fitness industry, kind of where you started and kind of where Petra Robinson was before joining Zumba? Sure. Uh, mine's a little bit unusual. Um, and also, I'm, I'm one of the older fitness professionals out there. Uh, I actually started in the, in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. But I started actually in Saudi Arabia um, in 1980. Wow. Uh, my husband and I and, and our three-year-old son uh, were transferred over to Saudi on a Northrop military um, contract. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of expats there, a um, lot of families, and most of the uh, the women, um, you know, were moms, young moms, and there were really no job opportunities. Technically, you weren't even allowed to work. And, you know, so we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we stay busy? What are we doing? And, you know, obviously, there was mahjong and tennis and hanging out in the in the pool and, you know, with the kids and and so a bunch of the girls got together and they said, you know, we, sh- we should really uh, think about maybe an exercise class or a dance exercise class. And so we looked around at each other. There were about 30 of us and nobody really had any teaching skills. And since I was the one that had taken the most fitness classes back in California, I had taken, you know, Jazzercise with mm-hmm. Judy Shepard Missit, uh, which was amazing, by the way, in those early days, and aerobic dancing with Jackie Sorensen. She was stellar as well. In fact, those two kind of were head to head, you know, in their, uh, uh, what would you call it, the, the launch of, of their programs mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and a couple of other, you know, little, little classes here and there. So since I had taken the most, they decided that I should be the instructor, which, you know, pretty much has been the story of my life, you know, kind of like in the right place at the yeah. right time, uh, a little bit of serendipity. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we started the classes and I honestly, honestly, to be truthful, I had no idea what I was doing, uh, but I got as many of the videos, VHS and mm-hmm. Betamax that mm-hmm. I could find <laughs> and uh, started watching and learning. And um, in fact, loved the Jane Fonda ones. And in the end, created my own program called Patricize. Mm. I dig it. I dig it. There has to be uh, noted here that with a lot of people that I speak with on the podcast or even that I talk with when I'm doing some consulting, there's an element of luck. And I think that a lot of businesses have those moments where they're going along and something just happens and there's a little bit of luck. But I, I really do think that a lot of it is the hard work. You put yourself in those opportunities to have those things come to you. And I, I have to throw that in there because at least listening in, I mean, you're doing the parts that a lot of business owners do. You're looking, you're buying the VHS tapes. Those are a little bit before my time, but uh, and you're doing the research, all that great stuff. And so these opportunities come up. Something that I would personally like to know, can you expand upon it? And kind of describe that moment you're talking about where you're, there's Jackie Sorensen uh, and Jane Fonda. And what was that time like in the industry? Is it was there kind of a, a like a race going on to who is doing the best or was it kind of a wow, like all these different formats are coming out? Oh, my God. I mean, it, it truly it was the golden age of aerobic dance and fitness. It really was. Um, mm-hmm. Aerobics was king. They even made movies uh, like uh, with uh, God, I, Jamie Lee Curtis. I think mm-hmm. it was called Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, it was it was a really cool time because most of us really didn't have much background. I mean, some people actually, you know, went to school for PE, mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, 
But a lot of a lot of us um, started off because either we were dancers in the, mm-hmm. you know, in high school or college or just athletic and uh, and loved music and loved dance. And you got to remember, this is the era of the disco music, too. Mm-hmm. Right. Which mm-hmm. was just made for dance aerobics, let's face it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was it was a great way of getting together predominantly with other women mm-hmm. and creating that sense of community, which actually, if you fast forward to 20 years ago, when Zumba started, mm-hmm. it really was that same kind of energy creating, you know, the fun exercise to great music and that mm-hmm. sense of community. And that's what we had in those early days, but it was really trial and error. I mean, honestly, you know, we, we would try something and it would work and then we would try something else and oof, no, they didn't like that. Or, (laughs) or those exercises actually hurt, you know, Mm -hmm. and (laughs) over the years, especially with some of my patron size stuff, (laughs) I look back on it now and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm surprised that I haven't been sued by these people for, (laughs) for damaging their hips and joints. Because again, we didn't know, right? Yeah. More is better. Faster is better. You know, kick it higher, you know? And um, <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of fun, Tyler. It really was. Yeah. I, and I mean, that's part of the industry that when people get into it, they don't quite realize how young the fitness industry still is. I mean, we're talking about the eighties and well, and starting in that in the podcast right now. And yet we're talking about things that if you just got in the industry now, 2021, you're like, what? There there was no exercise science. There was no chapter on biomechanics. What? Like what? Where, 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 where were they? And so even just thinking from a educational standpoint, you're talking about degrees like uh, physical education, PE. I'm guessing that degrees like mine, kinesiology, didn't even exist. We're probably not even on the radar for some universities. So it's really uh, interesting to me as someone that enjoys learning about the industry, how things started and hearing these names coming up. It's great to hear the growth, but it's so fascinating for someone that calls himself a fitness history buffer, someone that enjoys learning that kind of stuff. So let's continue on here. So you started your own Petra size, you were taking classes, growing that way. And when did Zumba start to come into the picture? I believe there was a couple things in between them. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, well, <clears throat> pardon me. I um, I returned from Saudi uh, the middle of uh, 1984 and uh, actually took a, a, a low impact with light weights uh, exercise class uh, out in uh, Westlake Village. Mm-hmm. And the instructor was Linda Shelton. Mm-hmm. And it was a packed class. It was like 70 people or so in this room. And after, and she kept looking at me and I was like, oh my God, what the heck am I doing wrong? <laughs> right. Because again, I, I was not certified. I didn't even know what certification was. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, this AFA didn't start until 83. Um, and so at the end of the class, she came up to me and, and she basically said, who are you and where did you come from? And I said, <laughs> Saudi Arabia. And she just cracked up. Anyway, long story short, she told me I, you know, I needed to get certified by AFA. Mm -hmm. And she would love to groom me because she really thought that I had potential to help, uh, obviously, certify other individuals. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I I took the training and and trainings. You know, we had we had quite a few and um, and and started working for AFA just as a as a certification specialist, you know, and um, and helping out as an examiner. Um, And in the meantime, I also rented a ballet studio and started teaching my, my exercise classes and, and they started, you know, getting really popular. And so I, I ended up actually partnering with uh, another lady who had an indoor swim school and we rented the space next to her and opened up uh, our studio. And, and again, this is all trial and error, but now at least I was certified. I was taking, you know, classes and certifications from the different organizations, you know, over at idea and, Mm. uh, and everything AFA had to offer and uh, and lectures and really started uh, enjoying this as a career and not as my ex would say, Petra's little hobby, okay, <laughs> the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. And there's a book in there somewhere, you know, <laughs> and, um, and I realized, wait a minute, 
there, there's a career here. This, I really enjoy this. And I wake up every morning, super excited about what the day is going to bring. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, uh, I actually had the opportunity uh, to interview for LA fitness in the early days, we only had like 10 or 12 um, gyms <laughs> and I got hired and um, ended up being the the corporate fitness uh, director wow. uh, for about a year or so. And during that time, that's when uh, Alpha came to me again and said, listen, we've got a full time job for you. Uh, we know you know how to produce events because when I was in Saudi, I produced a lot of events for the women and the officers, wives, clubs and tennis tournaments with Pan Am and mm. a bunch of stuff. So I was good at organizing people again, mm -hmm. trial and error, right? You know, mm -hmm. I was, I was the one that they go, well, you can do it. You do it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so I interviewed with Linda Pfeffer, who mm -hmm. uh, was the, uh, the CEO and president and they needed somebody to run and produce their annual convention in Atlanta. I mm -hmm. had never been to the convention. I didn't know what it was. It was called Apex. And I figured, what the hell? Okay, I can do that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, did it. And, it. and it was definitely a learning experience. Again, trial and error, trial by fire, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I quit three times and still came back. <laughs> and, uh, and then the rest is history. I stayed there for 10 years, um, producing not only Apex, the convention, but we then had uh, smaller academies across the country. And then we were really fortunate. Uh, we were given the opportunity to run one of the, the larger aerobics championships. And oh. so we did that for six years. And that was a, a, another wonderful opportunity to really learn about the, the business and also grow as a, as a professional, especially in the business world. Um, I uh, I really had just such an amazing uh, group of people that kind of took me under their wing. And again, that, I, I, you know, I get really choked up when I think about it, because without, you know, some of these people, I wouldn't be here today. You know, yeah. I, I be uh, hanging out at the at the gym or in the backyard, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned a lot of great start of things that being someone that has been fortunate enough to work on the education side of the industry, um, it was already rolling when I joined it. And to hear about AFA, you're talking about Group Fitness Corporation with LA Fitness, and you even talked about idea with all these things. I got to ask again, from the history side of it, what was that like? You're talking about things just getting started with the education piece within the industry. Was it a, a trial and error that we keep talking or that we keep talking about? Or would you say that people started off really hot with the education that they were bringing? What can you kind of expand on that? Well, during the years at AFA, um, one of the, one of the great things was we were given the opportunity to create new programming, right? Because mm -hmm. at the moment we st we all started off with in a group exercise. Yeah. Then Linda Shelton created uh, the low impact with light weights mm -hmm. uh, instructor training, and that was super cool. And that spot, you know, more more of those type of trainings. Uh, actually were created by other organizations and fitness mm -hmm. presenters. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, Reebok came to us uh -huh. and asked us to help them create Step Reebok with Jen Miller. And uh, and that was an amazing experience for the for the entire company. And, uh, you know, we grew that program globally with Reebok and all the master trainers. And and again, it was you know, Jen Miller created this program with a box, you know, mm -hmm. in Georgia. And uh, she did it because she had a bad knee and she was in rehab and she was doing some plyometrics and and she had this box that she was using to help uh, get her knee stronger, mm -hmm. which then that morphed into the official step. Wow. And uh, during those years, too, that's also when personal training started becoming really popular in the mainstream. And uh, so we created the personal training certification with uh, a woman uh, called Paula Besson. She was amazing uh, with AFA. 
and uh, and then Pilates came in. And so all these different disciplines started mushrooming, right? Popping up. <laughs> and uh, and it was just really cool to see the education then uh, complementing the creative side of it. Yeah. And the same with spinning, you know, John and Johnny G came, you know, came out with the spinning program, <laughs> which again, everybody thought they were all nuts. What do you mean? <laughs> bikes in the gym, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and, uh, and look where it is today, right? It's, it's still one of the most popular activities globally. So yeah, it's, it's um, the careers, I think that were started in the eighties and nineties were really exciting. And I think there was a lot more creativity available Mm -hmm. if that makes sense because i think we we really had no boundaries nobody said to us well you can't do that you know that's not done no we we did it we did it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and and if it didn't work okay we tried it it didn't work let's move on and, and let's try something else yeah Well, I'm reminded of a a buddy of mine, and he once said, you were either first or you got to be the best. And with what you're sharing now, you guys are the first in all these different areas. And I can't imagine that. That's (laughs) to be in the industry and be able to create that type of innovation to that essentially just push things forward for a whole industry whether it's a personal training certification, group exercise, step, all these things that now when we talk about them, whether it's on social media, conferences, we're talking about smaller things. We're talking about chapter editions or little things like, well, let's use the example of virtual training. I'm sure that that's, that's been one of the bigger certifications or even educational points being added in, in programs these days. But you're talking now about whole programs, which is just amazing for me to hear and to listen about with your career now. So you're working at AFA and you meeting all these great people, putting on conferences, all stuff that we see and we wonder, how did did they put these things on? That's amazing. Okay. Where did you go now? Well, after I left AFA, uh, my business partner and I, who was actually one of the co-founders of AFA, Marty West Kilby, mm-hmm. we we launched healthclub.com because mm-hmm. this was the, the dot-com era now, you know, 1988, 1999. And, uh, and it was, our tagline was the yellow pages of fitness. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very similar, if you can imagine, to a con- like if Facebook and Google had a baby <laughs> during the late 90s, that's healthclub.com. And it really was one of its kind. I mean, there was nothing out there like it. And uh, so it was a directory of fitness professionals, spinning instructors, yoga instructors, group X, personal trainers. We had over 50,000 people in wow. the database. We had about 29,000 health clubs in the database, wow. about 120 uh, associations and organizations, and then tens of thousands of manufacturers, you know, like Spry and, you know, Triangle Weights and Spinning, of course, and Mad Dog. And, and it was unfortunately ahead of its time because mm-hmm. the industry was not ready for technology, especially mm-hmm. on the group exercise side. I mean, we would go, we launched that club industry and idea in, uh, in 1999 and mm-hmm. instructors had no idea. I mean, they were like email. No, I don't have email. <laughs> what's an email. And of course, if you can picture this, our booth, mm-hmm. our booth had the big giant gray PC monitor, right? (laughs) And the big giant motherboard, you know, (laughs) and it, and it was dial up earthlink dial up. So yeah, uh, you think about the challenges that we had just to get internet connection again, just ahead of our times, you know, picture these two blonde ladies, uh, competing with all the it and tech guys. And, uh, you know, it was again, you know, time and place and Mm -hmm. uh, just shooting for it. And uh, unfortunately, over time, we realized that we really couldn't keep it going uh, because the dot-com bubble burst. 
Mm-hmm. And so our valuation, trying to have uh, these conversations with VCs and investors and it, and the valuation just kept getting lower and lower. And, and eventually, you know, it uh, it was not worth the millions that we had thought it was. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, we sold it. And and then I kind of retired for a little bit. I turned mm-hmm. 50 and um, was busy with my family. And, uh, <laughs> and that's when the Albertos came to mm-hmm. me. And uh, basically said, listen, um, we've got this company. They had an amazingly successful infomercial uh, that started in 2001. And then by 2002, 2003, they had subsequent uh, infomercials that were really gaining momentum and attention. And instructors were starting to call themselves Zumba instructors. They were out there uh, teaching classes, creating their own Zumba wear and creating their own Zumba email addresses. I mean, it was it was a compliment. Right. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the company basically was saying, wait a minute, we need to take control of this. And so they had asked if I could help them put together uh, the the Zumba instructor training mm. program with mm-hmm. Beto and the team. And so I did that and put together the infrastructure for the education uh, division. And we did the big live training. We had about 150 people oh. in Miami at the Duville Hotel, oh. which was like one of those uh, Rat Pack hotels, you know, with Sinatra and all of them, very art deco-y. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we were there. And at the end of the training, I thought my job was done. I handed them you know, all the info mm-hmm. uh, that they that they requested. And then I was going to fly back to San Diego. And at the end of the, the training, they pulled me up on stage with the Albertos and introduced me and, and gave a, a little bio. And then Alberto Perlman said, and this is our new vice president of fitness. <laughs> <laughs> and so, again, this is how I got my job at Zumba. Uh-huh. And so uh, there were five of us, literally five. Now there's about 200 and. 10 people that work in the office and, wow. you know, thousands and thousands of, uh, you know, Zumba instructors and master trainers. And, you know, it's just incredible what the company, you know, has accomplished. But um, my claim to fame is that I am a really good starter. Mm-hmm. And so I put the infrastructure together as best I could. And then with each division, you know, we had the education division creating the master trainers and then the instructor trainings. And we also then started doing trade shows. We also were looking at international partners. So I was using a lot of my contacts. And once we kind of got things going, then the company would bring in, you know, someone that was more dedicated and really accountable Mm -hmm. for each different division that I helped jumpstart. Mm -hmm. And then they took it, of course, and, you know, ran with it and scaled it to, you know, the levels, you know, that we have now. So it's been it's been really a joy and a pleasure um, working with the company and and watching it grow literally from from the ground up to be. I mean, it's a mega monster. You know, it is it is just impressive what they have done and and the sense of community Mm -hmm. that they've created globally. And especially now during the pandemic, it really came to the forefront, um, you know, just honestly, how much the company cares for their instructors. And, you know, I give the Albertos, there's three of them, by the way, uh, most most people know there's Alberto Perlman, Alberto Perez and Alberto Aguian. And, uh, you know, they they love what they do and they give back. And, you know, honestly, it's. I know I'm doing a commercial for Zumba now, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's, you know, you don't see that so often, you know, yeah. that that's the thing that's makes it special is that they are special and the company is special and the instructors are special and the master trainers and the zesses. So it's uh you know, it's, it's been an honor and a, ple- and a pleasure to, to be part of that group. Wow. Great share right there. I, I mean, just a little bit of a side note on it. Uh, I've, I've, I don't, I don't, can't think if I've ever taken a Zumba class, but uh, I've been in the industry for a little over 10 years now. And I will tell you that my mom doesn't really know what I do in the industry, but she does know what Zumba is and (laughs) she loves it. 
That's how, that's what I can say about it. I know it's great. I've always been somebody that respects what other companies can do and everything you shared right there. Those are pieces of great companies. And it's amazing to hear how you contributed to all those different areas. There's not many people that can do those things that you can start something, you can help grow it. And then, you know, and I think that's part of a, it's a characteristic of, of a leader, in my opinion, that, you know, that there's a point where you have to hand it off to somebody to let them do what they do with it. But you were able to help out with all these different items, a part of it. And it's one of those things where you say the rest is history because we can look back at what you're sharing right now and look at where Zumba is now. And you're like, what? Uh, that's amazing. And to hear 150 people packed for an instructor training, I, I can't even imagine what that looks like. I'm like trying to picture it in my head, a, a ballroom, I'm guessing, just packed with people. And that's the story of how you guys started. Just great, just great stuff to hear. Um, and with all this now, so... I'm sure that we can, this, this topic could probably be uh, another 30 minute topic talking about how things have changed uh, over the years. Can you share a little bit with how Zumba over the last year, how they've changed a little bit? Well, obviously just like all, all of us uh, in the industry, every, every sector, uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to use the, 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 the term pivot. <laughs> Everyone's had mm-hmm. to pivot mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and reassess how they do business. And for us, uh, we had to shift very rapidly from yeah. in-person instructor trainings, for mm-hmm. example, to virtual and also online. And luckily for us, we had been working on our online on demand pardon me, uh, training. And uh, so that was pretty much ready to go pre-pandemic. Uh, but, you know, obviously the virtual was uh, a little bit of a, of a challenge for us because uh, just like probably everybody in the industry, unless you happen to be a digital, you know, superstar, everybody was learning from ground zero, you know, Mm -hmm. all of our master trainers and our Zumba education specialists, you know, they were all like, okay, how do we do this? And so one of the first things that the company did is we created instructor training program on how to be a virtual pro. And so, and this was not just for the master trainers and, and the Zesses, uh, but it was also for our instructor core as well. And uh, and that really helped because it gave the the team, the entire team, instructors and everyone, the confidence to to go ahead and try teaching virtual because that was the only way that they were going to have, you know, any kind of income. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for us, that was really important. And and for many of the other companies as well, for example, Piloxing uh, also uh, had been actually about a year before the uh, pandemic shut everything down, they had been putting together their virtual uh, certifications and trainings as well. Uh, So, you know, there were some other companies out there that um, were already working along those lines, but many were not, you know, and so that, that was a challenge. Everybody was scrambling. Um, you know, with us, we also really try to provide as much assistance to our people as possible, helping them uh, find jobs. We created very rapidly Zumba.dance mm-hmm. and Zumba.dance is where all of our instructors can list their virtual classes and and also they can list their in person if they had any mm-hmm. uh, but on average there would be about 700 classes a day globally oh, from wow. all over the world and so that was super cool because mm-hmm. if you wanted to wake up at like three o'clock in the morning uh <laughs> you could take a class with uh george in hong kong right mm-hmm. and uh and so what it did too it it made our group, our community, our instructors, tr- master trainers, everybody, uh, more of a global community, like the, the connectivity between everybody was, uh, 
was brought closer together. And so that is just amazing. You know, they now they really feel they're part of a, a huge global community as opposed to more regional, right? Yeah. Um, the other area that that we're really trying to also work is uh, is get a little bit more involved with the military because mm-hmm. Zumba is uh, let's face it it's a happy program yeah. it creates happiness um, it, especially those folks over there uh, you know there's there's a lot of stress there's PTSD there's you know trauma there's for the expats, for the for the families, there's loneliness, whatever. And taking that one hour Zumba class transports them away to someplace fun and 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 a great sense of community. You know, and we're also looking at the at the university sector to get a little bit more involved so that we can create more jobs and and have folks actually Think about a career as a Zumba instructor or a strong nation instructor, which is our hit program. Yeah. Um, so we we want to expand and provide more opportunities for people that want to enter the fitness realm. And that's one other point that I want to make from the beginning. The people like even the people in that first big 150 uh, person training, there are so many people that take. Zumba trainings and Zumba in, in particular uh, that have never taught that are not fitness professionals. And we are, I personally feel the feeder system for someone who loves music, loves to dance, has a good personality. What a great way to potentially enter a new career doing something that you love and not feeling judged. You know, not really? feeling judged. And yeah. and it's super cool. I mean, I've interviewed people at trainings, in fact, uh, at a couple of different um, big events. And, you know, and I would pick out certain people that I could tell that they were not fitness professionals. You know, you, you, you can tell whether the mm-hmm. way it's they're moving or whatever. And I, you know, I've gone up to them and asked them, you know, why are they here? You know, what 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 do they expect to get out of this? How did they hear about us? That kind of thing. And a lot of them either had seen the infomercial or they, you know, they had uh, taken like a class, you know, at church or whatever, and they loved it so much. They just wanted to learn how to do it better. So, you know, think about it. What kind of program offers people the opportunity to actually come to an instructor training, not really want to be an instructor, but to just be part of the community? Yeah, I think that is. I think that's super cool. Yeah, uh-huh. I agree. I agree. And you know, those are all items that many programs can learn about, and they're questions that many organizations go through. And Zumba, or is an organization that you can tell that they are not afraid to test these items or to implement them, which is great to hear. I, I do want to touch on what we were talking about with the instructor trainings and the virtual, because in a sense, I feel like the last year forced companies to push forward in the technology uh, realm and how they implemented with their business. And I remember ooh, when I started in the industry, we would have these conversations about doing hybrid certifications. I started at a company called Nesta. We would often talk about hybrid trainings in a way to basically cut the cost, but also use more technology in the course. And none of those actually were ever implemented, but now we see a lot more of those being done. Hybrid trainings, the use of technology. And so I find that as a positive and at a time the last year and a half and still moving forward that it's a positive that our industry is taking steps forward in certain areas. So I'm putting that out there right there that I'm trying to find that silver lining with all the things that have affected our industry in the last year. But let's move to one of my favorite parts now of the of the podcast, especially when we have a guest like yourself that is just a wealth of information and knowledge to share. If you were just entering the industry now, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, that's a that's a good one. Uh, you know, um, for me, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, I 
I think it, the first thing is, is educate yourself. I, I did not do that. Obviously, you can tell from my history, it was a lot of trial and error. I, I was not part of uh, the, the a fitness education background. I was actually an art major. Um, but it, I, would, I would get as much education as I could, you know, to first off find uh, what do I love, right? And, and again, you know, is it group exercise? Is it personal training? Is it, uh, you know, weights, what, whatever it is. Um, but then it's really that network of, of contacts and connections for me, as you can tell from my history, that's, that's been my success, right? Is maybe a little bit of that serendipity, but I think getting yourself out there Mm -hmm. and, you know, joining as, as many like associations that you can, um, I listen and I participate with a lot of focus groups, uh, in the industry. In fact, I was on one just, just prior to this, uh, interview, uh, and I always learn something, but, I also network with all of the other folks that are, uh, you know, participating on these calls. And the same thing when trade shows now are coming back online, uh, go to the trade shows, network with other fitness professionals. We didn't have as many when I started, you know, we had idea, um, we had, you know, ACSM club industry and URSA pretty much. Um, but now you've got so many others, you know, you've got Fitness Fest, you've got SCW, all of them that are at DCAC. I mean, there's just a wealth of uh, opportunities for you to network regionally, uh, you know, with your peers, take as many courses as you can, and then also find, if possible, partners. Uh, I was really lucky connecting with people that we combined our resources together and were able to be better for it and, and, and be able to move forward faster. Um, but, you know, I, I think the other thing too, in this day and age, I, I would have to really take a couple of courses in digital marketing, social media, uh, either that or hire somebody, but uh, <laughs> because it's, it's so competitive out there now because again, we're, we're global, right? We're all global now. And so you've got YouTube, you've got all the influencers out there. It's hard to compete. So what you do need to find is first off, find your niche, right? Find what makes you different from anything else that's out there and, and focus on that market that. And, uh, you know, hopefully you come up with something that nobody else has or just a new spin on on how someone else is presenting that particular format that that you want to uh, to promote. Yeah, one I got to touch on. You mentioned my one of my favorite things and one of my secrets is YouTube. I don't (laughs) uh, I love YouTube and I think it's a such a powerful tool for a business to utilize it, grow with it. Um, and it's something that I tell people all the time and they're like, what? I don't understand it. What are you going to use it for? But it is such a powerful tool that I've utilized at many different um, conferences, just talking about it, doing lectures on it because it is very useful. But I think you touched on something that I think Fitness pros, as they evolve, they start to see the power of networking and using it to grow their business because right at the beginning, and it's no secret that the beginning is very hard for many fitness professionals. It's tough to not see income coming in immediately. Sometimes you work in early mornings, late nights, and then all of a sudden you got bills to pay. All these things add up. And it's hard to see how networking or going to conferences is going to greatly impact your business right at the beginning. But it's something that it truly does help. I think the part that's that's hard is that there's no monetary um, part associated with doing the meetings that you you mentioned, going to conferences, because you don't see that immediately. But all these pieces are, I think, a with every instructor that comes on the podcast or that is doing great things in the industry, they will all share those common, common things. And that's one of them is the power of networking. I mean, that's how 
I'm hosting this podcast now is my association with Janice Jakes, the owner of Fitness Fest, and how you and I are connecting now. It's it's one of those things that you got to not think in terms of monetary reasons all the time. So I like that you shared that, and I hope people really do take that away from them from this episode. As we kind of just talked about the speaking circuit now, what advice do you have for individuals that want to get on the speaking circuit? Because that's some, that's one of the common things that people ask me about, and there's different ways of doing it. But what's your advice for those individuals? Again, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, to be honest, again, I, I think getting your face in front of of these organizations first and foremost, mm-hmm. uh, market yourself, right? So, yeah. they're utilizing your social media platform is is it very important. And uh, if if you can obviously get some classes on YouTube or whatever, uh, and use that as your resume, right? Yeah. Um, you know, don't be afraid to to contact the the organ organizations, the leaders. Uh, you know, I know I know Janice is always looking for for new talent. Um, mm-hmm. So Sarah Cooperman, Amy over at at Idea, um, you know. They're they're always looking for new because it's it's a growing and evolving industry, and so don't be afraid to market yourself. Don't be afraid to knock on the door. All they can say is no or yep. ignore you. You know, so <laughs> mm-hmm. fine, move on and and do something else. But the other thing that that I think is really important is is you really do need to have a good team, mm-hmm. and you know, a team of advisors, and they don't have to be official and paid. But it's it's that team of advisors that can help you, whether it's on the business side, the marketing side, the digital side. You know, a lot of us in the fitness industry are not necessarily tech savvy. I mean, we're savvy enough. Right. And we've had to be, which I always thought was amusing that that Marty and I launched healthclub.com and I actually learned how to code just enough (laughs) to get me in trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're not we're not that that's just not our comfort zone. But this last year, it has really forced all of us to embrace technology. And so use that technology in your favor and create your your living resume. You know, it's a live resume and get it out there. Get yourself out there on LinkedIn and Facebook and, you know, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. And, you know, really try to to get your face and your product and program uh, in front of the leaders in the industry. Don't yeah. be afraid to network and, uh, and and introduce yourself when you are at these at these trade shows. Introduce yourself if you see someone that that you that you know or respect uh, in the industry, go up to them. Um, you know, I mean, it's at this stage. There's there's no limits because now technology has really made us a, a global a global world that everybody has access to. Yep. And uh, so I would just say, go for it. Don't be afraid. And also attend as many podcasts and uh, webinars because that you can do from the comfort of your home. Yep. And again, take a look and see who's on the list. It, will the podcast offer the opportunity? For you to be able to network with the interviewers, yep. maybe you know, maybe they can help you. You never know. I mean, never be afraid to ask. I guess that's the the short answer here. I dig it. I dig it. I got to share a story that I think I've maybe shared like once or twice on a podcast, and, and it goes along your point with just introduce yourself to individuals at conferences, and it's kind of a funny story. And Janice will laugh because she knows how. I- <laughs> that I'm a, I'm a fanboy of Dr. Len Kravitz. I think that he's done amazing work with the industry, his, the research that he's done, the individuals that he's helped start their career in the industry. And so the first fitness fest that I attended, I had joked with Janice about how I'm a fan of Dr. Kravitz and how it'd be great to meet him. And she's like, let's, let's go. Let's just, let's go to right now. Come on, let's go. I think it's, he's, his lecture's ending. And he's like, I'll introduce you. I'm like, what? And I got all nervous walking over there. And then she introduces me. We chat a little bit. And just after 
his willingness to speak with me, talk about uh, the work I'm working with my PhD, talk about the industry, all these types of things that he and a lot of the speakers, uh, you included Petra, that a lot of individuals in the industry, they're, they're willing to give back because they understand the industry and the growth of it. And that's why it's great advice. Just go introduce yourself because you never know what what's going to sprout from it. So that's my funny story about how I'm a fanboy of Dr. Kravitz. But let's talk about mentors now because that's something that a lot of fitness pros, they most likely or they maybe need a mentor. I've mentioned in different episodes that my mentors are not a part of the industry, uh, the fitness industry, uh, just because of the level that I work at with business, that I find good feedback, advice from individuals that are high level executives. And so I found that my mentor now, he pushes me to do things that are maybe outside of my wheelhouse or that maybe a little uncomfortable, but that's part of being a mentor. Petra, do you have, or have you had any mentors that have really helped you along your, your path in the, in the fitness industry? Oh, absolutely. Well, as I mentioned, you know, Linda Shelton, for sure. Um, she, she definitely, uh, I always say she discovered me, right? And, uh, and we continue to collaborate all these decades later um, on different projects. In fact, uh, I brought Linda in to Zumba mm -hmm. to create the Zumba toning uh, instructor training with Beto. And she also helped us with the Strong Nation instructor training. So, uh, you know, we, we continue to collaborate and uh, which is wonderful. But she also gave me my first opportunity as a presenter nice. um, decades ago. Uh, she produced an event called Shape Camp and Shape Camp was held at Lo Loyola Marymount uh, University uh, College. And uh, and it was a camp that was run by Shape Magazine and, and it had fitness from every, every discipline. And uh, she needed somebody to teach aqua aerobics. And I had taught that as well. And so she brought me in and I was nervous and, and just super, super, uh, I would say, uh, deathly scared. Let's put it that way. I was, <laughs> I was really scared. Mm -hmm. And, but I had my, I had my act together. Everything was fine until they informed us that uh, the Olympic pool was not going to be available. Mm -hmm. And I had to teach over a hundred some odd people <sighs> at the nuns pool because they had a section for the nuns mm -hmm. and it was like a backyard pool. So you can just picture the disaster that that was. <laughs> um, but you have to think on your feet, you mm -hmm. know, and half the people were in the pool, half the people were out of the pool. Other people were, you know, on the grass. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was funny. Mm -hmm. um, but that was my first start. Um, my other mentor that she has mentored me over my my years and she's also one of my best friends is Marty West Kilby who she was co-founder of AFA and and she and I actually worked together uh the entire time and so I learned so much from her uh she really kind of gave me the opportunities and many times you know she kicked me out of the nest and it was like no you do it you you can do it you've got the skills just go do it Mm -hmm. You know, and so I'm thankful for that because she had she believed in me, which that's half the battle, isn't it? You know, you yeah. got to make sure that that people actually believe in you if you're going to jump off that cliff. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, Linda Pfeffer, um, who I am still in contact with with Linda today. And she is the former CEO of AFA. Uh, she sold it a few years ago um, to Ascend Learning over at NASM. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she's still, she's still, in her words, noodling on ideas and things and brilliant woman. And then, of course, Joy Prouty, who I am still working with today. And Joy and I also met during the early AFA days. She was one of the top master trainers for Step Reebok but also for AFA. And, uh, and she actually, I brought Joy in to Zumba, like I think the second year in and to write her and Josie Gardner to write Zumba Gold, which is the Zumba program for the older active adult. And uh, they wrote that program and Zumba loved her so much. And she was in Miami. Uh, they brought her in and she continues to work as director of training uh, in the education department. So Joy and I, you know, work together. We uh, 
we collaborate on many things. And, and so these mentors, these, these ladies that, you know, um, really nurtured me, we're now partners in crime, which I think is, uh, just really, uh, delightful. And it makes my day really happy to know that I'm still working with these amazing women. I love it. Really great stuff right there. So Petra, before we sign off here, can you give listeners uh, a place to contact you if they have any questions or where they can find you on social media? Yeah, I mean, they they can find me on on LinkedIn. And the same thing with Facebook. It's it's facebook.com slash Zumba Petra. So Z-U-M-B-A-P-E-T-R-A. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, you're always welcome if if you're really interested in, in connecting. I do answer my emails. So if you want to email me at Petra at Zumba dot com, um, I will I will take your email and hopefully I can I can provide you some advice. And uh, and if not, I'll maybe find you someone else to talk to. I love it. This episode has been such a treat for me as the host. Be just hearing about the early stages of many of the big names in the industry, just hearing those things, the history, those are always fascinating stories to hear. And so I hope the listeners really appreciate that as well. Uh, Petra, thank you again for being our guest on the Fitness Fest podcast, and we'll definitely make sure to meet up, find a time to talk. Thank you again. Oh, thank you so much. It's been really a pleasure. 